So Cobb LED strips like you're seeing now have been a game changer in many ways, but at least for me, what I'm most excited about is testing these out on different aluminum profiles to figure out just how shallow I can go while still getting a perfect neon glow with no visible hot spots. And in today's video, that's exactly what I'm hoping to find out. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now I'm going to focus my efforts on three different products. The first one you're seeing now is going to be the tallest of the bunch, coming in at 12 millimeters of space. The next channel will be much more shallow with only 6 millimeters of clearance. This is one that I would never even bother trying with a traditional strip, but with these high density cob lights it's definitely worth a shot. I'll then test out performance on the shortest one I could find that has 4.8 millimeters of space. My gut says this is way too shallow, but we're here to find out. And as a bonus, I'm also going to see if these will work in this corner profile that I know from past experience doesn't look good when using strips that have 60 LEDs per meter. Now you may be wondering why this is even something I care about, and it really boils down to three things. First is that for many projects you want to blend things in as best as possible, and being able to use extremely shallow profiles is going to help with that. Next is that the vast majority of channels out there are 12 millimeters or less, so you're going to have so many more options to choose from if this works. And finally, it's all about the cost. These are about half the price of what you'd pay for a diffuser channel that has zero hot spots when combined with a strip that has 60 LEDs per meter, and if you're doing a big project, the savings will add up fast. So to set things up, I'll first put one section of lights in our shallowest profile, but I'll be leaving the diffuser off just so we can see how it performs with no cover. Next, I'll again put a section of lights in the same profile, but this time I will add the diffuser. This is the one that's 4.8 millimeters, which is the shallowest of the three. Moving on, I'll get another one set up in our mid-level profile that has the 6 millimeters of space. And finally, our last one will go in the tallest channel, which is the one with 12 millimeters of clearance. Now even though the point of this video is not about how to set up and control these lights, I will go over all that later on if it's something you're curious about. So now that everything's fired up, let's first take a closer look at the strip with no diffuser. This is where you can really get a good feel for just how dense these strips are with 720 LEDs per meter, but even though they are extremely close, you can still very visibly see the tiny hot spots. Next, let's move on to our shallow 4.8mm channel with the diffuser on, and I was actually quite surprised at how well this performed considering how little distance there was between the light and the cover. But I hope you're able to see what I'm seeing, because while it is close, I can still slightly see in the middle where the light source is coming from, as well as some shadowing where the black chip components are on the strip itself. So even though it is pretty close, it's still not something I would consider to be perfect. Next up is our 6mm clearance profile, and after staring at this for no joke about 30 minutes, if something that's perfect is considered to be a 10, I'm going to give this a 9.5. And maybe you'll disagree with me, but I feel like I can still slightly see a little bit of shadowing which is preventing me from saying it's perfect. And last but not least, no surprise, our tallest profile at 12mm is definitely a 10 out of 10 with no visible hot spots and no shadowing that I can see. And finally, I'll move on to the corner profile and quickly get the strip installed, and very similar to the 12mm channel, the results of this are equally as perfect. And as a reminder, I'll leave links in the description to everything I'm using, so don't forget to check there if you see anything you like. So now that we've seen things up close, I'll set these up on the wall so we can get some real life examples of the different options in action. And since I'm just setting this up for the demo, I'll be using some 3M sticky pads to get these attached, but if you were doing a more permanent install, you could use the included mounting hardware. So as I'm getting these put up, there's two main reasons why I went with these specific diffusers. The first is because, at least on the 6 and 12mm profiles, if you want, you can buy a separate roll of a continuous cover that can be cut to size for a completely seamless install. And the second reason is that they're available in 1 meter long sections which is standard, or 2 meters in length which is much less common to find. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial, and during the setup process one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. Now once the channels are up, it's time to install the lights. I'll be connecting these in series, which means one after the other. My first strip will be starting here and working my way left. At the end, I'll then attach the second strip and work my way back towards the beginning, and finally, I'll connect our third 5-meter section for the last run. We can now move on to getting the diffuser covers all snapped in place. And just so you know which one is which, the bottom channel is the 12mm kit, the middle is the 6mm version, and the top will be our 4.8mm profile. And for what it's worth, the 4.8 and 6mm kits did take a little bit more time to snap the diffusers in place compared to the 12mm channel. 
So as far as connecting and controlling these, I'm going to first attach the separate JST connector that comes with every kit to the beginning of our first LED strip. And I won't spend too much time on this, but for anyone that's interested, I'll be using this plug and play WLED controller that supports 5, 12, and 24 volt strips. Now if you do want to know a little bit more about this product and the full compatibility, make sure to check out the full walkthrough I just did that I'll leave a link to in the description. From here, I can simply insert the ground, data, and voltage wires into the push connectors on the controller, plug it in, and you're ready to go. But since having the controller dangling isn't ideal, I'll remove the wires, add some WAGO connectors, attach some longer cables, and reconnect to the controller to give us a little bit more breathing room. And what's nice about the way things are set up is that if needed, I can quickly add a couple more WAGOs to the power injection wires above and run those back to the controller's other ground and voltage slots to add additional power like I'm doing now. Once everything's connected, I'll tidy up the wires using some cable concealer tracks, and while not perfect, it definitely looks better than doing nothing. So we're getting close to finishing up, but I still need to move my DIY media console back in place and add some fake plants before we get things fired up, after which I'll play some final pictures and videos of everything in action. And at the very end, I'll leave you with some final thoughts, so make sure to stick around for that. So to wrap things up, after all is said and done, my vote for the overall best diffuser channel to use with Cobb LEDs would have to go to the 6mm profile. It's extremely thin, comes in 1 or 2 meter lengths, has the option for a continuous cover, and at this distance, I can't tell any difference in performance when compared to the 12mm version. It really does check all the boxes, and I'm sure I'll end up using this in some projects down the road. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day.